the big fire starter, the big story of the week was Kansas knocking off Oklahoma. Yes. Kansas knocked off Oklahoma 38-33. It was a dreary day in Lawrence, Kansas. It was cold and windy and rainy. There was a weather delay. And it was one of those games where he had like a total of six turnovers. Each team had three. And, you know, a lot to discuss here in terms of what went wrong, I think, on the Oklahoma side and some of what went wrong and even some of what went right on the Kansas side. Of course, they win the football game. But for me, just in terms of watchability on a day where we had a bunch of interesting matchups, this one ruled the roost. This this was like the most watchable game of the day. It was earlier in the day when everybody was still younger and full of life. And it lasted deep into like our live stream that we did, our, our watch along for the yes. Oregon-Utah game because of that weather delay. Um, so it really had like center stage for a good chunk of the afternoon. And it definitely delivered. Again, 38-33 Kansas with a big upset. Yeah, this was so this was a great game for shouting opinions about what coaches and quarterbacks should do to no one in particular. If you were watching this game alone or with a dog or with people that didn't care, hopefully you were watching this game with people who care about college football. But there was a lot of like, oh, you got to do this here. Oh, you can't do this here. You got to do this here. Oh, you can't throw it like that there. Oh, not like this, Jason Bean. Oh, like that, Jason Bean, though. Yeah. There was a lot. I, I spent a lot of time speaking to a wall like a crazy person watching this game and then speaking with you on our live stream and so right it's Dylan Gabriel opening up the game with that pick six Oklahoma getting stripped near the goal line but it was called forward progress stopped before the ball came out which is I mean you can't uh, review that so that was a, a nice Oklahoma break and then it was Kansas potentially scoring too soon and giving Oklahoma the ball I'm, I yada yada like four and a half quarters worth <laughs> even though that's technically not accurate um, but there was there was a lot of fun in this game, and Oklahoma has had some close calls, namely what happened against UCF, certainly close call in, in a win against Texas, but a, a really impressive day from Kansas. It was great coaching. The crowd was great in oh, bad yeah. weather. Devin Neal was great. Did Lo you see that local they, kid made good. Did you see that they tore down the goalposts and threw it in a nearby lake? I did, of course. It's the only Always. option, Ty. It's the only option. <laughs> always the highlight of the afternoon you know for me this game i think confirmed a lot of what i saw on paper yeah on the kansas side and it also brought out some of what scared me about oklahoma so like for example i called out a couple weeks ago now before the red river game the tackle success rates of oklahoma i devoted like a whole week's worth of picks to tackle success rate most of which was not successful because you know my luck with picking if you've followed the show for any period of time. Um, but tackle success rate, I had a bunch of Oklahoma, Oklahoma people chime in like nicely, just wondering like, where's that coming from? Because right. it seems like the defense is better, et cetera, et cetera. It, it is a subjective measure. I am not the one that is doing the numbers on that. It is something that I have seen and have access to, and I have been trying to follow throughout the course of the season. Oklahoma's defense on the whole, yes, is better, but going into that Red, R that Red River game, and especially going into this game against Kansas, was pretty low in terms of the tackle success rate. And so that is the type of stat that you can mostly hide from, provided your offense is playing well, provided you're not shooting yourselves in the foot, provided you're not turning the ball over three times. But in instances such as this, it is one of those scenarios where it tends to come out. You can't always hide from it. Right. And if you watch this game, I mean, I think Brock Hewitt even called it out in the broadcast in the first quarter, something like five missed tackles. There were a multitude of situations throughout the course of this one where it was like, can you please tackle the Kansas player? Right. It was you, it was slippery in their defense. It was wet. The weather was inclement. Yeah. But can you please tackle the Kansas guy and stop him from scoring the football? So Agreed. that to me was frustrating on the Oklahoma side. They also had 11 penalties, also frustrating. Two of 10 on third downs. Yuck. The three turnovers were costly. I mean, they just were. And and the one in the beginning where Dylan Gabriel threw a pick six, um, I guess off a, I think off a tip ball, like it, it that really came back to haunt him because this was a one score game in the end. Um, again, something we saw on paper from Kansas because Kansas, we did this Patreon spotlight episode 
Kansas creating more havoc plays. They're they're doing more to try and change the game from a defensive standpoint. Still not a great defense, not even a good defense, but they are doing more to make those plays. And this was a game where that definitely came out. I really felt because of the way Oklahoma was running the ball, especially early, that there was going to be more available, or maybe not even more available, more taken down the field. Dylan Gabriel opted to largely, and I don't know if it was a weather thing, I don't know you know, if it was a, a, a mistrust in the ball through the air, because as people know who have watched Dylan Gabriel throw a football, he's a very good quarterback, he's very accurate. He does not have a big arm. No. And so I don't know if there was concern from him or what, you know, mistrust from Jeff Levy of throwing the ball downfield. But look, if Drake Stoops is your guy, you're probably not doing a ton downfield. He's a, I think he's a good third court, good third receiver for a really good team. But if he's your guy, then you got to figure out some stuff out creatively. And I just, at Oklahoma wasn't really taking shots. They had the big catch at the end to, to help set things up. But I, against this Kansas defense, I just figured there would be more in the way of play action down the field with all of the success Oklahoma had on the ground. Credit to Kansas for doing a fantastic job of keeping the Oklahoma offense in front of them. I think I think you mentioned it, but maybe you didn't. It was something like two of nine, two of ten on two third down. Yeah, two of ten. For for Oklahoma. So they got off the field. And that's that's a crucial step. Before you have actual great players, you know, going three deep at every position, figure out ways to get off the field. By whatever, how, whatever strategy you can find, get off the field. Confuse quarterbacks, make tackles in the open field, get hands in passing lanes. And Kansas did a really nice job of that today. And that's winning football, and that's a sign of where Lance Leipold has brought this program to to win a game like this. In a very short amount of time. It's yeah, kind of wild. for sure. Um, statistically, if you go back and watch, look at the stats for this one, I mean, statistically, it ended up being a very even, very back and forth game which is i think what made it watchable um credit to jason bean for shaking off two picks i yeah i was worried about and then we talked about this about late game jason bean yeah that not great and made it work made it absolutely made it work and kansas got that stop late through a really bad pick late and still was able to make it work um look on the oklahoma side they still have the big 12 in front of them definitely take some steam out of their playoff hopes i think their playoff hopes are dead after this but it does not knock them out of any contention for the Big 12. The Big 12 is kind of thrown in a blender at the moment, and right. they're still atop that conference with only one conference loss. Um, but it will get interesting down the stretch, notably next week when Bedlam happens. There's, I don't know how many teams you want to count. Maybe this is a, a conversation for another day's show. There's like seven PFG teams in the Big 12. Pretty flipping good at yeah. this moment, right? Between Oklahoma, Texas, West Virginia, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, the way that they've played lately. Kansas State, the way that they've played lately. TCU is not one of the teams that fits that mark for me right now. But no, there's there's a number of teams. Obviously, Texas with a backup quarterback showed out really nicely. We're going to get all over the place. But like, there's a lot of those teams in the Big 12 right now. It makes it a fascinating conference. 